Hi friends, so we begin with an introduction to radiology. The first thing that we want to do is talk about the names of the important scientists who have contributed to the field of radiology. This is not very important as far as the current MCQ scenario goes, but this is for completion sake wherein you can still get a few one-liners about the different scientists who have contributed to radiology. So the very first scientist that you can see here is Wilhelm Conrad Rongen. He is considered to be the father of radiology. Right, so he is considered to be the father of radiology because of his discovery of X-rays. So remember that he discovered these X-rays on 8th of November 1895. The date per se, that is 8th of November also holds importance because that is considered to be the International Day of Radiology. He received a Nobel Prize in 1901, right? So that was the year when he got the Nobel Prize for his discovery of X-rays. So this is about Wilhelm Conrad Rongen. Uh, remember, he is considered to be the father of radiology, discovered X-rays and the story behind it is rather interesting wherein he accidentally exposed the hand of his wife and uh, that is how, uh, you know, uh, X-rays came to be known. And because he did not know what are these rays that he's accidentally discovered, they came to be known as X-rays, right? So that is the story and you must have seen the hand, the Bertha's hand basically, which is very, very famous uh, as far as the radiology archives go. So this is about Rongen. After that came in Godfrey Hounsfield and Alan Cormack who discovered CT scan. So CT scan, as we know, is computed tomography scan. It is a cross-sectional imaging modality which uses X-rays, right? So CT scan was discovered by Hounsfield and Cormac and here in Hounsfield is something that you'll hear again when we go to CT scan because the density that we see on a CT scan is referred to as Hounsfield units, okay? Then we have Peter Mansfield and Paul Lauterberg. So these are the guys who have discovered MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. As the name suggests, magnetic resonance imaging is basically based on the resonance of the protons within our body. The protons in our body are all spinning on their axis and when we orient them in an external magnetic field, they all become aligned in one particular direction. That is called as the resonance basically. So this is the principle behind which an MRI works and that is what Mansfield and Lauterberg had uh, uh, discovered and uh, remember that MRI is again a modality which does not use any radiation, right? So we will talk about it, but upfront remember MRI works on the principle of spinning uh, protons and magnetism and does not use any ionizing radiation. Felix Bloch and Purcell discover the concept behind MRI which is called as NMR. So NMR basically stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. Okay, so nuclear magnetic resonance again refers to that resonance of the internal magnetic field created by the spinning protons in our body and the external magnetic field. So basically this is the concept behind MRI which is NMR which was um, talked about by Bloch and Purcell the first. Then we have Charles Daughter who basically is considered to be the father of interventional radiology. The field of radiology wherein we will do multiple interventions, mainly vascular interventions by gaining access through the femoral artery or the radial artery which are usually punctured and then we basically perform a lot of intravascular interventions such as embolization, such as uh, angioplasties, right? So all of these are interventions which can be performed by an interventional radiologist, a very up and coming branch of radiology, right? So this is Charles' daughter. Then we have Henry Beckwerrell who is considered to be the father of radioactivity. Radioactivity is again something that we shall be talking about a lot when we go to radiotherapy and nuclear medicine. Wherein we are going to be talking about radioisotopes which are disintegrating and producing radiation. Right. So this is Henry Beckwerrell considered to be the father of radioactivity. Lars Lexel. Something which is important, I feel this is one scientist which can actually be asked in the exam to you. So Lars Lexel is actually going to be responsible for the discovery of gamma knife. Gamma knife is a stereotactic radio surgery. When you use the term radio and surgery together, it is basically a, a bridge between neurosurgery and radiotherapy wherein we give targeted radiotherapy to various brain tumors to uh, to basically destroy it, to basically kill the tumor and prevent damage to the surrounding 
organs so that is the point of gamma knife and basically we use a frame a helmet in gamma knife which is also called as the lexel frame because of lars lexel who has discovered this technology okay so this is gamma knife john wide is basically credited with the discovery of ultrasound ultrasound as the name suggests again employs the usage of sound waves which are in the ultrasonic frequency something that we cannot hear right so this does not use ionizing radiation it uses the property of sound waves going inside the body getting reflected and generating the images ian donald porse is credited with the discovery of obstetric ultrasound right so when we talk about obstetric ultrasound we talk about ian donald and robert egan is the scientist who is credited with the discovery of mammography which is the x ray of the breast right so these are the scientists that we need to know about and their various contributions okay going on to the terminologies so before we start the core radiology discussion you need to know that basically we have specific terms that we are going to use depending on the modality to denote the description or characteristic of an image if an image is black or white obviously we cannot use the terms black and white in medical terminology hence we have all of these terms that we are going to refer to depending on the modality for characterizing any pathology okay so when we are talking about x ray anything which is black is called as lucent or a lucency anything which is white is called opaque or an opacity right when we talk about ct mr ultrasound remember all of the things which are black are going to have the same prefix that is hypo anything which is white is going to have the same prefix which is hyper the suffix will differ depending on the modality so if you are talking about a ct scan basically anything which is black is called hypodens anything which is white is called hyperdense when you are talking about mri anything which is black is called hypointense anything which is white is called hyperintense when we talk about ultrasound hypoechoic hyperechoic right so these are the descriptors that we are going to be using for any particular uh, lesion okay going ahead to mechanism of action of ionizing radiation in day to day life you must have heard in fact layman's also use the same terminology uh, that ionizing radiation is not good for us it is damaging so now what is the concept behind it why do we call ionizing radiation as damaging so there are two main mechanisms by which radiation is harmful or basically it produces its effect the first mechanism is it causes dna damage particularly double stranded dna breaks is what it causes so there are mutations which occur as a result of ionizing radiation and the mechanism the main mechanism by which ionizing radiation acts is through double stranded dna breaks apart from that they also produce free radicals right so the name itself ionization tells you that when they pass through air or any matter they are going to produce these free radicals which are going to produce free radical damage okay so these are the two mechanisms by which ionizing radiation is going to act when we divide ionizing radiation per se we can classify them as either rays or particles the rays are going to belong to the electromagnetic spectrum that we all know isn't it so electromagnetic spectrum out of that there are three rays which actually are ionizing in nature the first one most important for us as far as radiology or diagnostic radiology goes it's x rays when we talk about the next rays which are gamma rays they are also ionizing radiation predominantly gamma rays are something that we do not use in diagnostic radiology per se but these are used in radiotherapy and in nuclear medicine right so when we'll talk about pet scan we'll talk about scintigraphy that is the branch of nuclear medicine wherein we will also employ the usage of gamma rays finally we have cosmic rays so cosmic rays are not something that we use for diagnosis or treatment they are the radiation that constitutes the background radiation that is all around us that everyone is exposed to so remember cosmic radiation is basically contributing to background radiation all right then when we talk about particles so what are the particles which are ionizing in nature so here we have protons we have neutrons we have 
electrons right so all of these particles are basically ionizing in nature and apart from that we also have helium nucleus which is nothing but the alpha particles right so all of these particles are ionizing in nature protons neutrons electrons and alpha particles and all of these basically find usage in radiotherapy they are not useful for any diagnostic modality they are only employed in radiotherapy okay going ahead to the diagnostic modalities now where we were talking about ionizing radiation so now when we talk about all the diagnostic modalities we can classify them into three the modalities which do not have any ionization power so non ionizing modalities the modalities which use x rays and the modalities which use gamma rays okay so when we talk about non ionizing modalities there are three modalities that you have to remember first mri as we talked about mri is something that uses magnetic field it uses external magnetic fields there is no ionizing radiation employed in an mri second is ultrasound ultrasound is going to employ the usage of sound waves which are going to pass into the body no ionizing radiation involved and something just for a theoretical uh, purpose something not used in practice too much is thermography right so thermography uh, theoretically used to be used for uh, the diagnosis of breast cancer but not used anymore but just for completion sake remember thermography is also a modality that does not use any ionizing radiation then we talk about modalities with the usage of ionizing radiation particularly x rays so here the first thing you need to remember are radiographs per se that we call as x rays only right so all the x rays basically which are a 2d modality a two dimensional modality which uses x rays the modality which uses x rays in a 3d manner you have x rays rotating around the patient in 360 degrees such that you get multiplanar images is a ct scan so ct scan also employs the usage of x rays apart from that a x ray study wherein we will have a continuous loop of x ray a video of x ray is called as fluoroscopy right so fluoroscopy basically or also referred to as contrast study is nothing but a contrast study wherein we inject iodinated contrast or any contrast into the body and we will see it with an x ray we'll see it with a loop of an x ray such as hysterosalpingography such as ERCP such as IVP and so on so all of these are investigations that we'll study in detail but as a general principle remember any study wherein we are injecting contrast and seeing the passage of contrast through an x ray video is termed as a fluoroscopy or a contrast study or a dye study again that is something that is going to use x rays when we talk about modalities which have ionizing radiation by the usage of gamma rays what are those modalities so here remember we have our pet scan so nuclear medicine scans will come into picture here pet scan which is positron emission tomography something we'll discuss in detail also uses gamma rays we have scintigraphy studies so just like we had x rays as a 2d modality that uses x rays scintigraphy is a 2d modality which uses gamma rays under the purview of nuclear medicine and when we do a 3d study in order to localize the nuclear medicine scan that is called as spect spect stands for single photon emission computed tomography right so basically it employs the usage of a ct scan and then we can actually see where the nuclear medicine mar marker is basically getting emitted from all right so remember spect is the 3d counterpart of ct for a nuclear medicine scan all right so these are the modalities which are going to use gamma rays okay so this is a broad overview remember multiple modalities are ionizing so it's always a good idea to remember the shorter list which is what are the modalities that use non ionizing radiation and therein you remember mri and ultrasound practically and then you have thermography for theoretical sake okay having a look at all of these images so the modalities that are going to use x rays so here you can see a chest x ray right so chest x ray or any radiograph for that matter is a two dimensional study using x rays when we have a 3d study this is a ct scan and 
what is this whenever you see white iodinated contrast right so this is your opacity the opaque contrast going into the uterus in the fallopian tubes getting spilt out and in the background you have an x-ray this is a hsg histosalpingography right which comes under the purview of a contrast study or a dye study and basically what we are going to be using here is fluoroscopy so remember fluoroscopy or a video of the x-ray is used in any contrast study including interventional radiology or dsa which stands for digital subtraction angiography wherein we are basically injecting contrast inside the vessels so anywhere we are injecting contrast and we are taking an x-ray remember that is going to have ionizing radiation Going ahead to gamma rays. So, what are the modalities which use gamma rays? So, when you see a study like this, a two-dimensional study, this is a study of the thyroid, a radio-iodine thyroid scan. This is a type of scintigraphy referred to as radio-iodine uptake study of the thyroid. Okay, so this is scintigraphy using gamma rays. When we take a three-dimensional study of the same, that is SPET. Single photon emission computed tomography. Here you can see a spect of the brain, a, a study uh, which is referred to as HMPO spect. That is your ligand basically that you are injecting to see the metabolism of the brain. That you can see here as a color coded image. This is spect, and an image which is important is PET CT. Right? So you can see here that there is a PET scan which is super laid on a CT scan. So, this is basically a PET CT, which is a hybrid modality, a hybrid between an X ray modality and a gamma ray modality. So, when we overlay a PET image on a CT image, that is called as a PET CT. Like you can see here, you will see that there are uh, all of these uptake areas. The areas that you see in this dark orange or dark yellow are the areas which are basically going to show you uptake physiologically uptake basically physiological something which is not pathological can be seen in the brain in the bladder in the kidney that is not abnormal that is your normal areas of uptake like we shall be discussing but remember this is what a pet ct looks like you'll have a ct in the background with a super lay of pet images okay so these are the modalities which are going to basically use gamma rays going ahead two modalities without any ionizing radiation so the first thing that you can see here is MRI, right? So MRI does not employ the usage of ionizing radiation, uses magnetic fields. Ultrasound is what you can see here, sound waves, no radiation. And this study here is thermography, all right? So thermography uh, was used for breast cancer. It would show up as, an, uh, as a hot spot on a thermography, not used anymore because we have far more sensitive investigations which are available, but this is what thermography actually looks like wherein you have a heat map of the body as the name suggests okay so these are your investigations without any ionizing radiation 